Thank you, Becky. This morning's gospel reading is from the 15th chapter of John. Jesus said to the disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is the commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from the Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commandments so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship. A long time I felt warm in, in church with the, finally the summer-like weather. So I want to try this again. So three weeks ago, I was scheduled to share with you the message, and I got snowed out. First time in 37 years being a pastor that uh, I was snowed out. Just a, a gentle reminder of the Lord who really is in charge of all things. And given the timing and the intensity of that storm, I think that was really a wise decision. So pastors never throw away sermons. We just, you know, tuck them away and hopefully have an opportunity to use that in the future. Now many of you don't know me. Maybe it's the first time you've even seen me. You say, what? who is this guy? Why is he up front? Why is he talking to us? Well, let me say a little bit briefly about, about that, about um, myself. First of all, my wife, Melissa, and I, along with our son, Michael, daughter-in-law, Janessa, our little granddaughter, Liliana, we are all members with you of our Savior's Lutheran Church. We joined the congregation with you um, a week ago, officially. Uh, I am a pastor of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, served three congregations over the course of my ministry, seven and a half years in West St. Paul, Minnesota, 20 and a half years in Wyoming, Minnesota, which is just 10 miles east of here. Then I took a call out to Salt Lake City, Utah, where we served for seven years, and then after that time decided we wanted to get back to Minnesota, where we're from, be closer to our family, especially closer to our, our granddaughter. And so I retired last June. We moved back in August, have a home in Andover. And um, so we're here, we're part of the community, happy to be with you. As you know, Glendy had both of her knees replaced shortly after Easter. And so she is recuperating from that. I think she's doing just fine. But she has um, three months off to recover and also do uh, a sabbatical. About that uh, time when she was um, having her knees replaced, um, you know that the youth director took a new position. And so suddenly, uh, the staff was a little bit short. And so Pastor Dan asked if I might be willing to help out a little bit um, during this time of transition until Glendy gets back and hopefully they have a new youth person here uh, in August. And I said, yep, I can help you out. I can do that. Um, and then he, he, he tried to insist that I have a key to the church. I don't want a key to the church. <laughs> he gave me one, though. I do have one. Um, but, you know, having a key, that makes it feel like too much responsibility, too much... <laughs> You know, they're not going to ask me to do, they're going to make me lock the church up now. So anyway, I'm happy to help out over the next uh, few months during the summer. And then once the staff is all back in place, I'll fade back out into the congregation and, and we'll help out and serve in the ways that we feel that we, we can do that. Back when I was in Salt Lake City, I had a pastor, friend, and colleague 
who said something to me in a conversation that I sort of has stuck with me. He simply said, Jeff, it's all relational. It's all relational. By that he meant what really matters in life, the only thing that, that, that it all comes down to, all boils down to, is the relationships that we have with one another. Everything is in some way connected. It is all relational. And I think that's true. I think that's true. Now, we relate to one another in different kinds of ways, many different ways, actually. I just want to kind of lift up three today. Um, and the first is the hierarchical relationship, kind of the top-down model. This tends to be the authoritarian uh, type of model. Some of you um, undoubtedly have served in the military. We thank you for that. You know all about this authoritarian top-down model. There's our rank and there are orders and you obey the orders of those above you or you give the orders to those below you. That's that hierarchical model. Many of you work in organizations that really are um, organized in this way. So, you know, there's a, there's a CEO of a company, there's the executive management, there's middle management, maybe there's some lower level management, there's the workers, and you kind of know your place within that um, structure. Even our churches um, are modeled sometimes in kind of this hierarchical way, depending on the flavor of Christian you happen to be. So our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters, they have a very hierarchical structure, don't they? With the Pope and the Cardinal and the Archbishops and Bishops and um, priests and deacons and the laity. So it's really a hierarchical kind of structure. We served for seven years in Salt Lake City, Utah, and we learned a lot about the Mormon Church. But one thing is very clear, it is a hierarchical structure. The top person, the president, is also called the prophet, who people of the Mormon faith um, revere and respect. And so it's a very, very much uh, that kind of way. So when the scriptures talk about relating to God, there is suggestion that we do relate to God as the one over us, the one above us, sort of a hierarchical point of view. And then that makes sense. Makes sense in many ways because, after all, God is God, referred to as the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Holy of Holies, the Almighty One, the All-Knowing One, all-powerful. God is God, <laughs> and I'm not, nor are you. We are, we are very small in relation to God, and so it's appropriate I think, in ways to worship God, the Almighty One, in that way. And I've done that. We do that. Um, been to the uh, Grand Canyon once in my lifetime. While there, one of the park rangers said, there's a universal word that everybody speaks when they first see the Grand Canyon. doesn't matter your language. You could, could be English, it could be Spanish, it could be Chinese, it could be Japanese, it could be Swahili. Whatever, it doesn't matter what your native, native tongue is. When you first look over the rim into the Grand Canyon, what do you say? Anybody? Wow. That's right. Wow. Everybody says it. It's a universal language. Um, and I have had those wow moments in other settings and other places. When you look at the stars at night on a clear night and think about the God who made all that, wow. And, and so in that sense, God is at the top of the hierarchy and we worship God in that way. Now we also relate to one another in families, right? So families are formed when a couple um, is in love and makes a lifelong commitment to each other. And the commitments are to, to love and care for and support and be... Uh, to, to live with one another, be a family together, support each other. And sometimes families have children and uh, could be biological children. It could be children adopted into the family. And so now parents relate to children and families. Siblings relate to siblings. 
when you marry, you bring on an extended family, right? So you've got a lot of family relationships. Families can be a great blessing. I don't know how we live without loving and supportive families. We know that we live in a broken world and the stresses and pressures that are put on families um, can at times be overwhelming and difficult. We acknowledge that as well. Scriptures also talk about relating to God like, a, like in a family. The, today's lesson, uh, God is referred to as Father, Jesus, his Son. Well, that's family language right there, Father and Son. We have baptism today, right? So in baptism, we welcome the newly baptized into the family of God. We welcome you into the Lord's family. In baptism, we become heirs to the kingdom. We are adopted into the family. So we are in the family of God. And what a great blessing that is to know that God receives us and we are part of God's family in the community of faith. Now there's another way that we relate to each other, more than just one, but I want to lift up this one today. And that is in friendship or as friends. Now this is different than the hierarchical relationships. It's even different than the way, often the way we relate in families. There's some different dimensions to that. In friendship, um, people maybe have some type of common interest. Something brings people together and it may be an activity, it may be school, it may be, you know, who knows what that might be. Personalities mesh and you form what we call friendship. Friendships are extend more broadly even than our families. So I've got friends that I made in grade school, which is a while ago now, still friends. I've got friends from high school, I've got friends from college, I've got friends in the congregations that I have served. It is a great blessing to have people in our lives who we call our friends, who listen to us and are there for us, supporting us as well great gift of God. Now the interesting thing, in fact the stunning thing in today's lesson is what Jesus says to his disciples about how he is now relating to them. Did you hear this? He said, I no longer call you servants, but I have called you friends. Jesus is telling his disciples and all of, all of us who, who follow that he no longer relates in a hierarchical, top-down, lorded-over type of relationship. Rather, he now calls us his friends. We are and can be friends with God. This idea of friendship with God changed my life. It really did. Back a few years, ninth grade, about to be confirmed in the spring, we went on an overnight retreat and um, I got to know the youth pastor in a little bit different way as well as some other adult leaders that were along. Up to that point, I had been a pretty faithful soldier in confirmation class, uh, learned what I was supposed to learn, memorized a few things, um, learned some things about the church, but I didn't have any sense or understanding that you could have a relationship with God. I mean, that just, at that point in my life, I didn't, I didn't get that at all. Until this retreat, as they began to speak about ways that we can now relate to God, the Almighty and the Maker, um, referencing this Bible passage, that now we can relate to God as our friend just as relate to others in friendship. God's friendship with us is unique. God chooses us. God took the initiative. God enters into the friendship with us, and I believe that wholeheartedly to be true. And then the lesson, of course, tells us no greater love has anyone than this than they lay down their life for their friend. And who lays down his life for us? Jesus, Jesus on the cross, who lays down his life 
so we might receive God's love and forgiveness and grace and enter into a new relationship with God, a relationship of friendship. I don't know what kinds of understandings or relationship you, will, you have in understanding God. There are many. But if you don't hear anything else this morning as part of this worship service, just hear this. Jesus says, I have called you friends. We can be friends with God because of God's grace and love in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God for that good news of God's love and friendship. Amen. Peace of God that passes all human understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.